Good evening, everyone, and welcome to KBVR. I'm Kevin Martinelli. And I'm Michelle Rickey. And I'm James Dixon. In Washington, the saga of Senator Bob Packwood's diaries continues. A U.S. District Court judge rules the diaries are unquestionably relevant to a Senate Ethics Committee's investigation into ele his alleged dealings with the lobbyists. The Ethics Committee is also probing allegations of sexual harassment against the Oregon Senator. The federal judge says the Senate subpoena for the diaries does not violate Packwood's constitutional rights against unreasonable searches and self-incrimination. Packwood still has the option to appeal this verdict with the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, so the battle is far from over. In other news from Capitol Hill, a Senate panel is working with the Clinton administration to ensure that radiation tests are no longer being done on Americans without their consent. These tests were performed in the 40s and 50s. Senator John Glenn, chairman of Senate Governmental Affairs Committee, is heading up the Senate panel. Today, Glenn questioned administration officials on the current human experimentation policies. Energy Secretary ha Hazel O'Leary has promised to make all records dealing with human radiation testing available to the public. Some of the topics Congress will be working on this year, crime, health care, and earthquake aid. Tonight, lawmakers came together in a joint session of the House and Senate for President Clinton's State of the Union Address. In the upcoming months, Congress will be working on competing health reform plans and anti-crime measures. Other topics on the agenda include a, pro include a proposed <coughs> balance budget amendment to the Constitution and several environmental bills. In addition, Congress will discuss how much money to provide for earthquake cleanup in Los Angeles and surrounding areas. In other national news, the Justice Department reportedly will pursue a civil rights investigation due to the outbreak of racial violence in New York. A law enforcement source says Eternal Ge Attorney General Janet Reno has agreed to have a grand jury look at the 1991 trouble in Brooklyn's Crown Heights section. The violence began after a seven-year-old African-American boy was struck and killed by a car that was in a motorcade for a Jewish religious leader. In the ensuing violence, a rabbinical student was stabbed to death. One man was charged with the killing, but was later found innocent. Since then, prosecutors say they've turned up new evidence against another suspect. In regional news, the Right to Die advocates in Seattle, Washington are trying to overturn a ban on doctor-assisted suicides. This particular lawsuit could threaten similar laws around the nation. Attorneys representing three terminally ill people, four doctors, and a group called Compassion in Dying filed suit in federal court in Seattle yesterday. They claim, they claim the state law forbidding doctor-assisted suicide is unconstitutional. The same ban is illegal in 30 other states. Students at Reed, Reed College are searching for a small leak in the nuclear reactor located on their campus. This reactor creates a controlled radiation field that students and faculty use in research. Reactor director Michael Pollack stated that the leak occurred on one of the reactor's fuel rods. The radiation detected is one ten, one ten millionth of REM, which is about 10,000 times less than the background radiation that occurs in Portland on most days. After five minutes of leakage, the students decided to shut down the reactor. Pollock thinks that this leak might be a reappearance of one that was detected in November of 1991. Polk County District Attorney Fred Avera accused Michael Bray from Salem and two other men of killing Georgia Lee Dutton. This accusation was made at Bray's trial in Dallas yesterday. The two other suspects in Dutton's slaying, 22-year-old William Steiner and 46-year-old Edward Haffey, planned to testify against Bray. Avera stated that the three decided to kill Dutton after she told them that she had <coughs> information about a drug conspiracy that they were involved in. Avera stated that Dutton was raped and strangled to death in Bray's motorhome. In Portland news, a 35-year-old Portland man who was arrested while carrying an arsenal of handguns and ammunition at an Oregon City shopping mall has been convicted of, fi of firearms felonies several and several misdemeanors. A Clackamas County jury found Craig Murray Belknap guilty yesterday of unlawful use of a weapon. He also, <coughs> he also was convicted of criminal trespass, carrying a concealed weapon, and unlawful possession of a firearm. This was not the first time Belknap was arrested for weapons charges. Last September, sheriff's deputies found several loaded handguns and hundreds of rounds of ammunition, as well as brass knuckles and racist pins and buttons on him. In news closer to home, a Sutherland man who pleaded guilty to sexually abusing a girl under the age of 13 
has been sentenced to 20 months in the state penitentiary. Under the sentence imposed by a Douglas County judge, 24-year-old Samuel John Adams will serve 40 months of probation after he is released. Court records show that a charge of first-degree sexual abuse was dropped in exchange for the guilty plea. Corvallis lawyer Stephen Black leaped into the national spotlight when he decided to represent fugitive Catherine Ann Power, who earlier this year confessed to driving the getaway car in a bank robbery that, l that resulted in the death of a Boston police officer. Today, instead of enjoying wealth and book deals, Black faces legal action and bankruptcy. The Oregon State Bar may punish Black from accepting one dollar from Power. Black claimed that he was exempt from, the, from contributing to the bar's liability fund. This fund is used to pay public defenders when their clients can't afford to pay. According to Kirk Hall, CEO of the fund, Black's decision to represent Power put him in private practice, thus voiding his claim to being a public defender. The Senate bar has not yet ruled on Black's case. This next story is a condensed summary of the different events that were going on around the campus during the Martin Luther King Recognition Week. These events range from a peace pledge wall to a community dinner in honor of Benjamin Hooks, the former executive director of the NAACP, and his wife, Frances. James Dixon for KBDR, here in the MU building. Behind me is a prime example of the creativity students have taken in planning for the Dr. King celebration. This particular piece is called Living the Dream Pledge, in which students sign the wall to signify their dedication to equality and diversity. It was sponsored by the IFC Diversity Council and Panhellenic. This is James Dixon with KBVR here with Cheryl Carr, the Executive Senator for ASOSU and the Northwest Regional Representative for the United States Student Association. And we have her here today to talk about the Peeps Breakfast, which she was the MC of. How are you doing today, Cheryl? I'm doing okay. Well, basically, I think our viewers would want to know, what was the purpose in the design for this breakfast? Um, the purpose of this breakfast was to let the students and the community and faculty and staff um, in on the celebration of Martin Luther King, who was probably the greatest civil rights leader of all time. I mean, what does the holiday mean for you, the Martin Luther King holiday? I think this is a time where we can all reflect and see, you know, where have um, people of color come since the civil rights movement, where do we need to make strides. Um, I think it's a time for us to look at ourselves and say what can we do to help our neighbor and that's what I feel like it's for. I can't stress enough that these were only a few of the events going on, but I thought these few shots summed it up quite well. They give you an idea of just what Dr. King stood for and how what his beliefs have brought us all as a nation that much closer to true equality. There's a lot going on this week. Yeah, I thought it was a, uh, a, a it was quite a great deal to um, be a part of that community dinner. Yeah, and I also had a chance to go along with James as the cameraman and we certainly enjoyed ourselves. Stay with us. No. Hi, welcome back. So Kevin, can you tell us what's going on in the skating world these days? Well, I certainly can. The Nancy Kerrigan investigation continues today. Tanya Harding's attorneys have released a statement praising figure skating and Olympic officials for keeping an open mind about her Olympic status. Harding's former bodyguard and ex-husband, along with two other men, all have been charged with conspiracy in the attack on, the, on Nancy Kerrigan. Harding herself has not been charged. The attorneys defend Harding in saying that she has earned a place on the Olympic team by winning the U.S. figure skating championships. They say it would be, quote, manifestly unjust and contrary to well-established legal principles to remove Tanya from the team on the basis of unproven charges. There are also a few reports on new minor occurrences, none of which have been verified by authorities at this time. She practiced for over an hour this morning in Portland. After warming up, she skated out with a small video camera and taped the photographers who have been following her around for weeks saying, how do you like it? In the NFL, the Super Bowl comes up this Thursday, this Sunday, and Thurman Thomas and the Buffalo Bills will go head to head with Emmitt Smith and the Dallas Cowboys this Sunday in Atlanta. The two teams met the media today and most of the stories you will hear in the upcoming week will be information and statistics gathered by reporters from that news conference. 
for any of you looking to bet on this game, the Cowboys are the favorite by 10 points. Also in the NFL, as expected, John Madden has signed a contract to jump from CBS to the Fox Network as lead pro football analyst. A Fox News release doesn't mention the terms of the four-year contract, but it reportedly is for $32 million, making Madden's paycheck higher than some of the players in the league. At the same time, a source close to the network confirmed that Summerall, a 33-year CBS veteran, also has signed a four-year contract with Fox, keeping the pair together. Madden was with CBS for the past 15 years working with Pat Summerall before the network was outbid by Fox for the rights to broadcast NFL games. His last game for CBS was on Sunday at Buffalo Stadium. In the boxing world, boxer Iron Mike Tyson's stay in an Indiana prison may be cut short if the former heavyweight champ will admit to the rape of Desiree Washington. Indianapolis TV station WTHR says it's a proposed deal between the boxer and Indiana prosecutors. Tyson's attorney, Alan Dershowitz, refuses to say if anyone is working on a deal for Iron Mike. Marion County prosecutor spokesman Rob Smith says the story is not true and that there is no deal at this time. Smith says to his knowledge the prosecutor's office hasn't even been approached and if it was, Smith doubts the office would accept such a proposal. The former world heavyweight champion, who has maintained his innocence, is serving a six-year prison term for raping Washington, who was a contestant in the Miss Black America pageant. News a little closer to home. In the local sports, the fifth-ranked Oregon State gymnastics team is gearing up for a run at the NCAA championships, with All-Americans Sherry Knight, Michelle Sandoz, and Tracy Crover. OSU coach Tim Turpin calls his seniors, quote, probably the best class of any team in the country. And a few scores come in from the NBA. The Orlando Magic defeated the Washington Bullets 112-89. Shaquille O'Neal had 22 points in the contest. The Miami Heat defeated the Charlotte Hornets 119-98. The Knicks over the Suns 98-96. The San Antonio Spurs crushed the Kings 107-91. The Rockets come up 96-93 over the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Atlanta Hawks win 95 over Milwaukee Bucks 90. The Clippers stun the Sonics 111-103. And the Portland Trail Blazers pick up a much needed win 122-117. to Woo, that's good news for those Portland fans, don't you think there, it Kevin? It is. Yeah, with the loss of the Suns and the loss of the Clippers, well, the Clippers defeating the Sonics, that's going to move Portland up in the ranks, putting them two games behind the Suns in the Western Conference. Up next, Chuck's going to have the weather forecast for us. Stay with us. No king. No king. They didn't want a king. So the Virginia plan. How about those bees this year, huh? Hey, go bees. The idea of the New England plan. Can you be our TV? That's channel 31. Are you Franklin? Who? No king. Was really oh my god, I got a personal. I made the card. I can't believe it. In Constitutional Convention, the idea of a new government system. Album, Luminance Basement. You're listening to KVVR FM 88.7 on the dial. Class, are you paying attention? Welcome, welcome back to KBVR. So we're going to be able to go hiking tomorrow. What's the weather going to be like? Well, if you rise out of bed late or get out of class early enough, you might be able to reach up with some sunshine after the morning fog burns off. We'll have more about that later. But right now, let's take a look outside with the uh, current conditions. It's cloudy with a temperature of 38 degrees. The barometric pressure is 30.06 inches and rising. Humidity is 88%. The winds are 6 miles an hour out of the east, and the freezing level is 3,600 feet. The stats for today is a high temperature of 45 degrees, a low temperature of 36 degrees. We had no precipitation. The record high for the day was 11 in 1943. The record high was 61 in 1935 with the record low of 11 in 1943. 
And taking a look at the forecast, tonight in the coast we have areas of fog otherwise fair with lows in the mid-30s. Wednesday, slight chance of showers with highs in the lower 50s. Thursday, partly cloudy with highs near 50. The Cascade Mountain forecast is tonight fair, freezing level near 5,000 feet with minimum past temperatures 20 to 25 degrees. Wednesday, increasing clouds with light snow above 4,500 feet. Maximum past temps are going to be 35 to 40 degrees. Thursday will be partly cloudy with a freezing level near 3,500 feet with maximum past temperatures 30 to 35 degrees. Our area forecast for Corvallis tonight will be fog and low clouds, lows in the mid-30s. Tomorrow we'll have locally dense morning fog burning off than otherwise fair with highs in the mid-40s. Thursday there will be some morning fog then partly cloudy with highs 45 to 50. And looking further on down the line into the weekend, we've got more good weather low temperatures in the morning and afternoon, but otherwise nice and sunny. Well, thank you, Chuck. That's, that is, that's good news for us uh, college students. Well, it should get us outside more. Well, we're going to take a small break, and when we come back, we'll have Derek with entertainment. Please stay with us. Well, so, so tell us, is Demi Moore going to have her babies, or... What's going on? Actually, I do know, I just got news that she had eight kids, actually. Three boys and five girls. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I, I actually don't know <laughs> the answer. Big for that. But I do know to tell you that women trapped, or officials in Florida say an elderly woman is in serious condition after, after being trapped in her bathtub for, for about four days. A nursing supervisor says 84-year-old Sophie Ellick is not improving. Firefighters in Titusville found her Sunday after a neighbor called the police. A police spokesman says Ellick couldn't lift herself off her back to get out of the tub. Police say she was too weak to talk, so it's unclear what happened. Talk about prunitis. Well, guess, guess who's got Ted dancing on the rebound? People's Magazine says it's actress Mary Steenburgen. The magazine says, says Danson and Steenburgen met while filming the movie Pontiac Moon. Publicists for the two confirm they are dating. I'm happy for them. Well, Ted and Mary might be having fun, but what about Dan Aykroyd? He is named as the other man in a divorce battle going on in Roanoke, Virginia. Rich Hawkins claims Aykroyd had an affair with his wife, actress Lisa Alif. Both Alif and Aykroyd have denied having an affair. Alif joked that she did have a baby by a space alien and dated Elvis. Aykroyd calls the allegation a flat lie. He and Alif worked together on the movie Dragnet in 1987. Hawkins, meanwhile, will tell his story on the Montel Williams show and is ready to go on other shows like A Current Affair and Hard Copy. Good luck to you, Rich. Well, amongst reports of a multi-million dollar settlement, a, a hearing is on tap today in the suit accusing singer Michael Jackson of sexually molesting a teenage boy. Jackson lawyer Howard Weitzman won't comment on the report of a settlement. He says a statement will be made after the hearing. A source told the AP yesterday that the singer will pay a sum in eight figures, at least $10 million. Recent news reports put the amount between $5 million and $50 million. A settlement could scuttle the criminal investigation of Jackson. If the boy stops cooperating with police, he can't be compelled to testify. Jackson is not charged with any crime, and he denies molesting the teenager. Well, police say a man arrested for stabbing a pedestrian in New York City was carrying a bumbling love letter to Janet Jackson. Police say Derry Wright is also a suspect in at least three other attacks. They say he told them that he stabbed people who didn't say excuse me after bumping into him. They say his love letter to Jackson ended with the words kill everyone and attack on sight. What an idiot. Well, doctors at the Institute of Medicine have concluded that mental illnesses can be prevented just as measles and mumps are. The institution is an arm of the National Academy of Sciences. In a report released this morning, it says prevention should start before birth. The researchers say proper prenatal, infant care, and immunizations will help cut down mental disorders from retardation to schizophrenia. The doctors say programs can even help teenagers and, and adults, teaching them how to avoid violence or offering training for people who lose their jobs. The Institute is asking Congress to spend $50 million in health care money for treatment and research. The doctors say mental illnesses cost the nation more than $200 billion a year in treatment and lost productivity. Well, the Menendez brothers 
Last but not least, help put Court TV on the map. The Bobbits were a ratings bonanza, but the network is drawing the line at coverage of the Lobster Boy trial. Court TV executive Stephen Brill says he refused to cover a murder trial of the circus performer, even though witnesses would have included a fat lady and dwarf. He tells TV Guy that ratings would have go gone through the roof, but he still said no way. Brill, al Brill also says he refuses to let tabloid TV shows use Court TV footage. He says one show called to ask why, and Brill told him, because you're a bunch of sleaze balls. Well, I agree. I don't think that, I, I don't know, I wouldn't put that on tabloid TV shows either. Well, I think that somebody needs to make a stand, you know, finally, when it comes to regards to Yeah, ratings. definitely. I mean, so much is allowed on TV these days. So, uh, I, it's got to be, there's got to be a line somewhere. Well, hey, how about, that kind of makes you kind of a little apprehensive and bumping into people when you, you might get stabbed there without saying excuse me, huh? Oh, yeah, I know. No kidding. Is that a story? That is a weird story because that guy, he's getting really picky, isn't he? He is getting very picky about stabbing people for not saying excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Especially in New York City. Does anybody have manners like that and politeness? I didn't think so. Well, thanks a lot for tuning in tonight. Glad to be here and have a good evening. Good night. Good night. Thank you.